I wanted to provide a resource for those of you who are finding it a little bit challenging to use the dimensional analysis method for converting um, in stoichiometry. And so this conversions flowchart that I've created for you is going to help you to solve probably about 90 to 95% of the problems that you'll encounter. Now, a special note, those of you who are in CITS chemistry, you guys have had to do problems where you're comparing atoms of one element in a compound to atoms of another element in that same compound. This chart, the way that it is currently set up, does not work for those problems. Having a really strong understanding of dimensional analysis will actually allow you to solve really complicated problems down the road. And this um, flowchart here is just really meant to help those of you who are struggling in specific areas to get over that little bump, um, give you some confidence back. All right, so the way that this conversions flowchart works is that the biggest thing you guys need to remember is that moles is everything. Like if you can get to moles, you can convert over to compounds or atoms, you can convert to volume, you can convert over to mass. And so moles is what I consider to be like the heart or the central part of this flow chart. What this can help you do, let's say a problem gives you mass in grams of a compound and wants to know how many compounds there actually is in that sample. So what you'll do is just follow the arrows. So the mass in grams is what you'll start with. You'll divide by the molar mass of the compound and that will give you moles of the compound. It'll tell you how many moles of the compound are in the sample. And you're not done yet, so the next thing you'd have to do is multiply by Avogadro's number, and then that final answer will give you the number of compounds. Now we could do the same thing if we're just dealing with a single element. So if it's saying like how many atoms of hydrogen are in a sample of, you know, five grams of just hydrogen atoms. So again, we would take the starting mass, divide by the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1.01. .01. That will give us moles of hydrogen. And then we would just multiply by Avogadro's number to get the number of atoms. Now this is the exact thing that you guys have been doing in dimensional analysis. This is the exact same thing. I'm sorry about that. Um, but some of you are having a little bit of a harder time using the fraction method. And so this is just meant to help those of you who are needing that extra boost. Okay, so another example, something that we just recently were, was working with um, is this volume concept. So at standard temperature and pressure, ideal gases will occupy a volume of 22.4 liters. And so if you are starting with volume, like they give you the volume of hydrogen gas and they're asking you for, let's say, grams of that gas. I know this was something that several people had messaged questions on last week or this week, sorry. Okay. So we would start off with our volume. We would divide by 22.4 liters. That would give us the moles of gas. Then we would multiply by the molar mass of that gas to get the mass in grams. One thing people were having issues with is that if it was a diatomic gas, like hydrogen is H2 or oxygen is O2, nitrogen is N2, they were forgetting that you had to actually double the molar mass. So instead of using 2.02 .02 for hydrogen gas, they were using 1.01 .01 and that's where they were experiencing issues. But we could go in reverse. Let's say they gave us a sample of hydrogen gas. Let's say it had a mass of five grams. And the question is what volume should that occupy at standard temperature and pressure? We're just going to follow this flow chart over, right? So take the starting mass, divide by the molar mass, multiply by 22.4 and our units will be in liters. Now this section over here, right in the right hand corner, it's really reserved for questions that are specific to college chem. In college chem, you guys are expected to go beyond um, just the, the basics of stoichiometry and you guys have to dig a little bit deeper. So this one here, I don't want you to be confused because it says atoms in a compound and then up here it says atoms. The one up here is meant for if you're just working with a sample of just atoms or just compounds, any of these conversion pathways will work. Okay, now if you are dealing with atoms in a compound, many of your problems started off with something like if you had, you know, 27 atoms of oxygen in a sample of water, what would be the mass of that sample? And so in that, you would have had to have started off with this 27 atoms of oxygen. You would have divided by the specific number of oxygen atoms in the compound, which is one. That would get you to compounds. Then you'd have to divide by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd to get to moles 
of water and that's where it switches, right? And then you would multiply by the molar mass of water to get the mass in grams of the sample. So this is nice because it actually helps you with the vast majority of extra little problems that you're given. But again, this does not help you when you're converting atoms to atoms within a compound. So this flowchart is, I think, super helpful in terms of if you're stuck or if you just want to double check to make sure that your dimensional analysis methods are working, just follow the arrows. That's the biggest thing I can tell you. On the top of this flowchart, I just gave you some cheat sheets. Like if you're converting from mass to moles or moles to mass, from volume to moles or moles to volume, it's just the typical step that you would take in order to do that, but it's like one step at a time. What I really, really, really like about the flowchart is that you can do multiple steps in a row. So I hope that helps answer some of your questions. Maybe it gets some of you unstuck that are really having a harder time with this. I strongly encourage you guys to you know, take a picture of this, um, pull it off of Canvas, insert this into any of the homework assignments that you are on right now that require doing these conversions. When we get to our next unit, which is looking at chemical reactions, in using stoic and chemical reactions, I'll make sure that I provide some sort of flow chart for you guys early on. With that said, I always encourage chemistry students to do dimensional analysis to really get that process down because problems that look really hard can be made really, really simple. It doesn't require you to memorize a flow chart um, or anything. If you know dimensional analysis, you can tackle really, really challenging problems just using that simple technique of one conversion to the next, to the next, to the next. I miss you guys so much, and I wish I was actually showing this to you guys in person. Um, again, please don't hesitate to reach out as you're stuck. So many of you have done a tremendous job of asking for help um, or asking for a clarification, so keep doing that. Don't sit at home stuck and frustrated. I am here to help you. I miss you. Talk to you soon.